In this module, we're going to introduce two vaguely related topics, recursion and strong induction. These could be, be two separate modules themselves, but they kind of work together. And so we're going to start with the first several videos are going to be talking about recursion and recurrence relations. And then we'll talk about strong induction. And this first video is going to introduce recurrence relations. So to start, there are three ways of defining a sequence. And so far, we've really only talked about the informal method and an explicit formula. So an informal way of defining a sequence could be to, to say three, five, seven, dot, dot, dot. And this is great and easy, except we have the problem of what is the next number? Is it nine for odd numbers? Or could it be 11 for odd primes? Right? or some other number. We don't really know because this is poorly defined. It's a very informal definition. An explicit formula is really the best bet. It's really what we want, and we can define it as such. Right. So what this tells us is that our sequence starts when n equals 1. So here our sequence would be 1 plus 2 is 3, and then 2 plus 2 is 4, and then when n is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, and so on. And this is going to grow, um, and if we were to write it informally, it would look something like that. But the formal definition is specified in this formula. And we can see that this is going to carefully specify the sequence with no misunderstandings possible. So this is really what we want in a formula or in a sequence formula. The third way of defining a sequence is called a recurrence relation. It's defining it by, via a recurrence relation. And the way this is going to look, it's going to look similar to an explicit formula. We're going to say, a to the k, or some other variable, except now we're going to define it in terms of itself. And now we're going to need what's called a base case, or a base step. And so the way this works is this is different than an explicit formula. An explicit formula, to get the 100th element in the explicit formula, we would plug in, make a different color. So for A100 in the explicit formula, we would say this is 100 plus 2, which is 102. To figure out A of 100 in this recurrence relation, we would have to figure out what A of 99 was and then add 2 to it. And to figure out what a of 99 was, this would have to be a of 90, a of 98 plus 2 plus 2, and so on. So this is much, it's not as good as an explicit formula. But again, it's better than informal definition because we, we are still formally defining it. There's no misunderstandings possible. And notice that we have to have, in this situation, we have to have this base case, this base step down here, to kind of define where we stop. So both of these parts are needed in a recurrence relation. And ideally, what we would like to do is be able to be, uh, start with a recurrence relation and convert it to an explicit formula. And so the question becomes, why would we ever want to do a recurrence relation if an explicit formula is better? And the reason is recurrence relations are often very elegant. They're often very much easier to get to come up with than an explicit formula. And so if we have a way of coming up with a recurrence relation and then converting it to an explicit formula, that's going to be ideal because that's often much easier to do than co coming up with the explicit formula directly. So here we're going to do an example of a recurrence relation, and this is actually a little bit more complex because we have 
two different parts that we have to look back. We have to look back one step and then two steps. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to look, this recurrence re relation is defined with this. It needs all of this. This is given. And then we're going to start plugging it in. So I'm going to erase this. And what we're going to do is I'm going to say, okay, A of 2, I'm going to look at my recurrence relation, this first line, and I'm going to say A of 2 is going to be A of 2 minus 2 plus 2 times A of 2 minus 1. I'm just plugging in 2 for K plus 1. And then we can figure out what that means. So a of 2 minus 2 is a of 0 plus 2 of a of 2 minus 1 is a of 1 plus 1. I'm trying to run out of space here. Uh, but what we get from this is if we plug in a of 0, we know that's 3 because we're given that. So 3 plus 2 times a of 1 we know that's 2 plus 1. Right. And so what this is going to equal is this is going to equal, I'm going to put it up here, 3 plus 4 plus 1, which is 8. Right. So a of 2 is going to equal 8. And then we can do this for the next value. So looking at a of 3, a of 3 is going to be a of 3 minus 2, which I'm just going to put down as a of 1, plus 2 times a of 3 minus 1. And again, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm just substituting this, the 3 for that k. So 3 minus 1 is 2, so a of 2 plus 1. Substitute these values in. I know a of 1 is going to be 3. Wrong place. a of 1 is going to be 2. Plus 2 times a of 2. Well, we figured out a of 2 is 8. Plus 1. And if we work this out, we're going to get that this is 19. Okay, we can do the same thing for a of 4. This is now going to be a of 4 minus 2 is 2, plus 2 times a of 4 minus 1 is 3, plus 1. It's going to be a of 2 is 8, plus 2 times a of 3 is 19, plus 1. And if you work that out, you're going to get that this is 47. which means we can write the, the informal definition of this sequence is actually going to be 3, 2, 8, 19, 47, dot, dot, dot. And as you can tell, that would be very difficult to guess. If you were just given this informal definition, you, it'd probably be very confusing as to what's going on. Um, and so this, while this is a little bit of a complicated recurrence relation, at least it's formally defining this very, very complicated sequence. And what's really interesting is if we take the exact same recurrence relation and all we do is change the initial conditions. So remember in this previous one, we had initial, initial conditions three and two. And we've just swapped the order, so now it's 2 and 3. We're going to get something very different. So let's walk through this. So a of 2 is going to be a of 2 minus 2 is 0. So this, this top line is the same as before. 2 times a of 2 minus 1 is 1 plus 1. This is going to be 2 times 2 times a of 1 is 3 plus 1. This is going to be 9. Here a of 3 is going to be a of 3 minus 2 is going to be 1 
plus 2 times a of 3 minus 1 is a of 2 plus 1 is going to be uh, a of 1 is 3. Oh, this should have been a plus right here. My bad. Plus um, 2 times a sub 2. We figured that out. That was a 9 plus 1. And again, if you work this out, you're going to get a 22. I'm not going to go through the arithmetic. A of 4. We're going to get a of k is 4. So 4 minus 2 is 2. Plus 2 times a of 4 minus 1 is 3. Plus 1. a of 2 is 9. Plus 2 times a of 3 is 22. And again, this is, I'm not going to go through the arithmetic. This works out to 54. So here, the informal sequence is going to be 2, 3, 9, 22, 54. Which is going to be very different than what we had on the previous slide. All right, here we had 3, 2, 8, 19, 47. And by changing the initial conditions, just by swapping them, just flipping them from a 3 to 2 and now to a 2 and 3, we have a very different uh, sequence. It's still a complex sequence. It's still a sequence that you probably wouldn't be able to just guess what was going on if you were just given uh, the informal um, sequence. Now we're going to take a look at this from the other direction. We're going to look at a sequence and see if we can come up with a recurrence relation for it. So this is known as the Fibonacci sequence. Um, it, it was first uh, described by a person named Leonardo of Pisa, often called Fibonacci in uh, 1202 in Italy. And it was meant originally to describe the reproduction of rabbits, but it turns out this is a very common sequence in nature and uh, there, there's a lot of videos about this online so feel free to look into it. The property of this sequence is that any number, so 5, is the sum of its previous two numbers. So 2 is the sum of its starting numbers and 21 is its sum of its previous numbers, and this is how the sequence gets developed. So the way we would come up with a recurrence relation for this is that we would want to use that property. So a recurrence relation to describe this might have something like we would say a Fibonacci number is equal to its previous two Fibonacci numbers, the sum of them. So the sum of the Fibonacci number previous plus the sum of the one before that. Now notice, since we're going back two steps, we have to have two uh, initial cases. So here I'm going to have f of 0 equals 1 and f of 1 equals 1, All right? And these are going to be our initial cases that allow us to build our recurrence relation.